So, does writing advice work? No, yes, no, yeah, no, yes, yeah, no, mm, no, yes. It's a complicated question. So I get a lot of comments on this channel that want to debate whatever the topic of the video is, and they usually boil down to, this isn't the only way to do this, or this is overdone. And you know what? I agree, usually, except for the mean ones. Don't be mean. I love comments that explain something in more depth or offer a perspective I might have missed. Like recently in my video on how to write a novel, someone mentioned that word count goals aren't always great motivators because for some people they can be intimidating and end up discouraging. That's a fantastic perspective to share. There are a thousand ways to do anything. anything. So sharing your perspective and what works for you in a space where people are trying to become better writers, like this YouTube channel, is fantastic and productive. So does writing advice work? It depends. There are two fundamental truths that you should understand about advice in order to get the most out of it. Let's talk about them. First off, writing is an art. Art is a massive topic and most importantly, subjective. Someone can only tell you how they feel about art. They can never share a 100% fundamental truth, and you can only give so much advice without context. Let's take my pacing video from last year as an example. I can never tell you how to perfectly pace something. That's A, subjective, and B, it depends on a plethora of factors. Who's your audience? What's the medium? What's the genre? How many characters are What's there? What's your personal writing style? What do you have style? for breakfast? What's your middle name? What do you like? Unless I read your entire project, I can't give you my honest opinion. I can only give you guides based on everything else. Nobody can give you objectively true advice about your art. But that doesn't mean advice doesn't have value. All advice has value. It just comes in different forms. One of the most important things you can do as an artist is listen to your audience, but that doesn't mean you have to agree with them. It does mean though that you should be mindful of where that advice is coming from. That will help you understand who beyond that one person might think similarly. Depending on who your target audience is or what your goals are with your work, you can decide whether the advice is actionable or not. So writing advice is clearly a tricky topic, but if someone gives you advice you disagree with, don't discount it outright. Like I said before, it can tell you something about what's in your target audience or distinctly not in your target audience. But more importantly, if someone gives you advice, they're sharing something that's worked for them. So ask yourself, how did it work for them? Why did it work for them? The answers to those questions can help inform your own processes, even if it's different from what their original advice was. Which leads us to our second fundamental truth about advice. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance because this one might get a little bit ranty, which is only because I feel like people who misunderstand this step can sometimes gatekeep newer writers. Let's start off with an example. So I occasionally get comments about the hero's journey, which I've done a series on and mentioned in a few other videos. The comments are just about always the same. Don't use the hero's journey. It's oversimplified. You can't just follow a plot structure and make something good. And again, yeah, I agree. If you just follow the hero's journey all the time, you get uninspired stories like, I don't know, Disney's Jungle Cruise. The rocks you see here in the river are sandstone but some people just take them for granted. It's one of my bolder attractions. I don't know, this movie wasn't, I guess it wasn't that bad. It, it was just boring and predictable, which is, you know, the fear. If it was just a hair more boring, I would have turned it off, but it, I kept it on. But that's not what we want out of our stories. We want our stories to be good and for people to talk about how much they like them. So I appreciate the sentiment that it is not a cure-all because it's not, but instead of just dismissing it, try offering an alternative. The point of learning about the hero's journey isn't to find the ultimate solution to plotting. 
It's to learn the basics. When I talk about the hero's journey, endings, or pacing, I'm not saying this is the way to do this forever the end. I'm talking about established structures that people have used and thought about for a long time. To continue our example, people use the hero's journey. Does it always have great results? No. Does it always have bad results? Of course not. Plenty of fantastic stories use it. The hero's journey doesn't make a story good or bad. A good writer will write a good story and a bad writer will write a bad story. I wanna make it clear that this video is not just about the hero's journey. It's just a good example because I've gotten so many comments about it, but it, it is wonderful. When someone comments and they say, oh, the hero's journey is bad. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Tell me a story that doesn't use it that you enjoy so we can have like a conversation about it. And when they give me an example that is a story that uses the hero's journey that they think doesn't, mwah, mwah, perfection. Just proves my point it, about this entire video is that learning about that can give you value. And if you're just hating on a piece of advice because you don't understand it at its core, what are you doing? I'm sorry about the rant, end it. Literary structures and methods are tools for a writer to use how they choose. And there's no correct tool for a job when it comes to art. But they give you options and are especially fantastic for beginners, which is why I think this entire video is so important. It's hard to start a new hobby or switch mediums, especially when there's often this social pressure that comes like, have you published your novel yet? No, I haven't yet, Aunt Carol. Get off my back. Stop asking. There's a billion things to do or try, which can be paralyzing for a new writer. That's what the basics are there for, to help them get started. Whether or not something like The Hero's Journey works for your stories is up to you. But if learning about it can give someone the foundation to get started, that's always a good thing. These fundamental topics are jumping off points because if you never start, then you can never learn. And I'm not just talking about The Hero's Journey. I'm talking about all writing advice. If someone tells you something, consider trying it out. And if you hear something from multiple sources, definitely try it out. You might eventually reject their advice for something else later on, or you might use it forever. Either way, it helped you write more and learn. That's the point of writing advice. I'm never trying to tell you laws to abide by. I'm just trying to help you write more and learn. So telling someone outright to not use a popular method is potentially taking away a tool that could have helped them, which is not good. For a personal example outside of writing, I started doing digital art a little over a year ago. I don't do it a lot, but I like it. It was hard when I started though, and I would get easily frustrated. The thing that helped was watching videos of other people drawing and sometimes copying the work of those creators. I would trace other people's drawings or copy their color palette. Obviously, I can't act like a trace of someone else's art is my own work, but the act of copying them and implementing tips from YouTube videos made it easier for me to find my own style and develop new methods. I had a place to start and new perspectives to look at problems from, and I understood that I didn't have to do everything just like these creators I was watching. And I've heard similar things about fan fiction. I know it gets made fun of online quite a bit, but who cares? Who cares what people online think? But having that pre-built world and characters makes it much easier to start since you don't have to make everything from scratch. And it can also be a great way to try out things you haven't done before, like a new point of view or story structure. So, does writing advice work? Sure, as long as you understand what it actually is and where it's coming from. No one can tell you the laws of writing because they don't exist. And even something that's overdone for one person can be helpful to another. Learning any art form is a process of paying attention to what's already out there and trying things for yourself. I can't say everything there is to be said on a topic in a single video. It would be like six hours long and also probably not that productive since when you get into the nuances, that's where your personal experience and biases really become important. So I still want your comments when you disagree with me or when you think I oversimplify, as long as you explain why. Also, comments are just good for the algorithm in general.
Give people your perspective so that they might learn and grow as writers. And thanks for watching.